so what I got here is Catherine's site. And what I'm gonna do, like I said, I'm gonna design hack this thing just basically kind of like Catherine would do. We're gonna go through her swipes method and I'm gonna show you how I analyze the site. And then we're gonna go into ClickFunnels itself and we're gonna build out the important parts of the site. We're not gonna build out the whole thing because as you know, she's got a million lessons in here. I'm gonna show you the basics of what you gotta to do to build it out and then you can go and build the rest of it from there. But the one thing that everybody has the questions about on here is the badges. So let me just open up where Catherine has the badges. Now, what happens in here is you come in and you click that you want to apply for this badge. And you put in your name, your email address, and then you put in your Facebook URL of where you posted that you had achieved that badge and you click on submit. And when you do that, what happens is it, it does a couple things. One is, if I recall, because I haven't done this for a while, but if I recall, it plays an audio file, the, the horns blaring. So it plays that. So that's basically, again, click on the button, automatically activates the code that plays an audio file. Then there's some fireworks that go off somewhere. All that does is you click the button and it runs the code that runs a video file. So those two things are very simple. The third thing it does is where it gets more complex and why I haven't jumped on this yet is it has a JSON database set up. Susan, I think your mic is open. Um, oh, sorry. I mean, if you got any questions, let me know. But otherwise, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to minimize the noise. So they use in here what's known as a JSON database. And so what it does is it just, it stores the data. So, so I come in, I log in, and it will set up an initial record in that database for my name, for my email address specifically. And then as you go through, it keeps track of which badge you are on. So in my case, I'm, I have completed badge number eight. And so it says up here at the top, it says the next badge is a 10K club, which would be badge number nine. Now it knows to put this text in here because it goes out when I log in with my with my email address, when I log in, it goes out to that JSON database, it finds my record with my email address, and it says badge number eight. So it then knows, okay, if this person already has badge number eight, then give me all the stuff for badge number nine. So in this case here, badge number nine would say, 10K Club is your next step. And it would also give me this image to put in here, indicating that I've gone up here through badge number eight, and then it will also give me this page drawn out completely with all the, with all the, basically what this is, is these are colorized images and these are non-colorized images or grayed out images. So that's all it does. It basically puts those three items in here based upon that badge. Now the sticky part is the JSON database. And like I said, I have not done that yet. So will I do that sometime in the next couple of months? I probably will. But that's not what we're going to be talking about today. But I just want to give you a basic understanding of how that works is it has to be stored in a database external to ClickFunnels because inside of ClickFunnels, you can store the data in there, but there's no way to retrieve it because we don't have access to ClickFunnels API. So there's no way that you can retrieve that information. So let's uh, take a look then here at what we have for Catherine's site. And like I said, I'm going to show you how I design hack things. And then we can, I wonder if I can move this up to the top, if that'll work. Probably not. Oh yeah, it will. Okay. All right. Um, and so, like I said, we'll just, we'll look at this and then we'll go in and we'll actually build it and we'll build out the lessons and I'll show you how to restrict the lessons and all that kind of stuff. Because in a case like this, this is a paid product. So we want to make sure that nobody can get into this paid product and be able to, um, you know, be able to get access to it without having paid to uh, buy this, the, uh, buy the program. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to right click right towards the top of the page. We're going to click on inspect and we're going to open up the um, Chrome developer tool. And what I like to do is just come in here and just start taking a look at what is the structure of the entire page. So let me see here. Where did we click there? We got that image. So we come up here a little further, come up a little further. And what I'm looking for is this top container. Okay, so we got a top container here. And whenever it says container in the code like this, that means that it's a section. 
Okay. So now if you, if you come down inside of this, this section and we can we get the little arrows here and we're going to click on this, we're going to open it up. And then we're going to see inside of there, we got this, this another div here called container inner. And then inside of that, we'll have to close some of this up. We're going to see that we have a one, we have, we have a row right here. And you can see when I highlight over the top of it, that that row goes all the way across the page. So that immediately tells me that that is a one column row. So if I open that up, why is it showing me a two column row? Oh, I see what they did here. That is actually a two column row. Okay. Because you can see that little thin line on the screen at the top there, that's showing me that a left, left column and a right column. That isn't necessarily the way I would do it. I would probably build it as a one column row and then bring it down to like 67% and then float it to the right and then take the, um, take the text in the middle and uh, just, um, what do I center, center that in the middle. But this is just as good as well. But let me show you what we got here then is, this tells me, and actually it's better if we look at the next row down. Let's do this one here. So this one here, we have a three column row and we can tell that because again, we're gonna come down below here and we're gonna see it says, Cow left, cow center, and cow right. If it's a four or five column row, they got slightly different names there. And it's and if it's a two column, it's just cow left and cow right. And then I don't know if it's a one column, if it's just cow, I'm not really sure. But one thing you want to look at here is you got here cow MD4, cow MD4, cow MD4. What that four indicates is that on any screen like this, they use something that's known as bootstrap, and it gives you a 12 column row across the entire thing. So there are 12 columns in here. And what it's saying is take the first four and put that into column one, take the next four and then the next four. So we're dividing this up into three equal sections, three equal columns across here, each of which having the four, no, let me see. Yeah, it'd be four, four of the bootstrap columns. So four times three equals 12. And that's where these numbers come from. But that also, as you're gonna see here, gives us three equally spaced rows. Now, if we come down to the next section, which is the whole content section down here, and we open the same thing up, we are going to see a two column row. So we got cow left and cow right. And in this case here, we got columns of four on the left and eight on the right. So when you set up your row and you grab a hold of that little bar in the middle, you're just going to pull it over to the point where there's a third to the left and two thirds to the right. That's all that all this fancy numbers and everything mean here. And I'm trying to go through this and kind of demystify a little bit of this for you. But it's also this is the way that I actually do my hacking is I go through and I look at the structure this way and say, okay, how wide is this? How wide is that? Now, when we get into the lesson part over here, that's actually built in the lesson section. And so again, we're gonna basically take an entire full width of a page essentially and jam it down into this smaller box. So all the rules apply over here on the right hand side. So if we click on here and we inspect this, we should get the same result where we have, we have cow left, cow center and cow right. And then each one of them again is taking up four of those bootstrap columns. And so, but because it is built in the lesson section, it's gonna take up a lot less space and be injected in there. And we'll show that when we get into how you build a lesson. So that's pretty much it for the structure down here at the bottom is just one more big section. And then we had a two column row. And again, it's not split down the middle. So I think this was five, seven. In fact, let me just inspect it. So we should have five, yeah, so here we got cow left and cow right. We have seven columns on the left and five columns on the right. So again, you grab a hold of that slide bar, you basically move it over one notch. Every notch it moves over is one of those 12 columns. So you could just count how many times you move over and you'll know you're exactly spaced out the way you should be. So and then next thing, let me see here, what does she look at next? She looks at words next. And again, that's pretty basic on this page, but let's just right click on this word up here at the top and we're going to inspect it. And we're gonna look here. First off, we have the L headline wrapper and here we got the ID, let me highlight that. So there is the ID. So now if you're in 
side of ClickFunnels and you go down, you click the hashtag and you pull up the CSS ID selector. That's what that would be right there for this element. And then with most of these elements, you're going to have like an outer wrapper and then you're going to have the actual content inside of that. So let's click on the actual content part and we're going to come down here, look at the bottom and let me pull this up a little bit. We're going to come down here, look at the bottom and we're going to find out all kinds of information about this content. We're going to see that we have a text aligned to the right font size of 14 pixels. Here is the color of it. And if you click on the little square, you're going to see um, the color come up. Here's an RGBA, A being the alpha channel. And so if you slide this bar up and down here, it will change the opacity or the alpha channel of that color. And then we can click on here, HSLA you will never use, but you, you will use hexadecimal. Now you don't want to use the hex if the alpha is set at anything other than one because you're gonna get a funny looking hex and it's gonna have this extra 7D here on the end or whatever happens to be. As I move this around, you can see a change. The question becomes, and I forget now, if you can still use the, um, the eight character hex decimal in ClickFunnels or not. I know I tried it one day and I don't remember off the top of my head whether it worked or not. So uh, the best thing to do is just use the RGBA. So you're saying, well, how can I copy this? I, I don't want to have to type in RGBA and put the brackets around it and all that. Well, it's simple. You just click here. Once you click there, you get the little check mark and it says that the color was copied to your clipboard. So anywhere in a site that you are hacking, or any site that you're working on of your own, you can come in here and you can actually just play around with the color until you get the color looking right. Then you just click on that button right there, and boom, you uh, just copy that into your, into your ClickFunnels account and then you're good to go. And as you also saw here, there's a color picker. So this, uh, when this is blue here, the color picker is on. And so I can come here and I can click on this, whatever color this is. And you see up here at the top, it changed that text to that color. Now, obviously, I don't want it to be that color, but I forget what the old color was, so I can't really change it back at this point, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't change it on the page, and that's one thing you have to know, is anytime you're operating in something like this, it's not actually affecting the page at all. It's just you're inspecting it. You can change stuff. You can do whatever, but as soon as you reload the page, it's going to go back to its natural state because you're not actually affecting the code because you could be inspecting somebody else's page like I am with Catherine's here. I don't own that, so it wouldn't be cool if I could change it. So as we scroll down on the left here, we can see what the font family is. And again, you can come in here and you can change that font family if you wanted to. And it would change what the text looks like. You can change the text, it's text align is right. I can click on that, turn it off. And now it's back to text align left, which would be the default. I can change the font size here if I wanted to. I can turn it off or I can just click on it. I can type in a new font size or I can use an up and down arrow and just change the size of the font right there. And again, once you got it looking right, then you, then you just remember what that CSS is and you go into ClickFunnels and you put it in there either in the, in the manual settings um, in the right sidebar or you just put it into your custom CSS if need be. We got text transform of uppercase, line height of 1.3 EM. Now EM, I forget what exactly it stands for, but that means 1.3 times the height that is set for the entire document. So somewhere up at the very top of this page, up in, in the top of the code here, it says site-wide we want the text to be, and let me see, I can calculate it here real quick. Line height 21.1, so it would be 17. Is that right? Be something like that. Uh, because it's 1.3 times whatever that number is. So that's probably 17. No, it's not right whatever. Um, but whatever it is, it's one times three, and then it gives us our 21.6. But you see here, I went from styles to computed. And so when you go there, you can come in here and you can see the color, you can see the display block, you can see the font family of Gotham, um, the font size of 17, uh, line height of 22.1, and right on down the road here, everything you ever wanted to know about that element. And otherwise, everything else on this page here, like this element right here, if we were to click on it, let me, let's sue in. If I were to click on this element here, now this part here again is in the lesson. Anything on the right hand side here is inside the lesson. Everything in here is in the navigation. And I'll show you how we set that up here in a minute. 
but we're gonna come in here and we're going to inspect this and what we're gonna find is that this is an entire section again. So anytime it says container here, we know that this is a section and then inside of that section, we're gonna have our container in our, you, again, you don't have to set up any of this stuff. You just go into ClickFunnels and you go, when you're building your lesson, you go, okay, put in a, put in a, a, a full width section. And then we're gonna drop in a row, which is right here where we have our row. And then what do we do inside of our rows? We put in our elements. Now in this case here, we said we just want a one column row. That's why there's only one column showing here. Oh, and I said before, so we had call left, call right, call center here it's call full if it's a single column row and then there's always a call inner like i said normally you have like an element and then you have like an element inside of an element so this is like the inner part of the column and then down here we have our headline wrapper and then inside of that we have the headline itself so in most all cases here you like have one element and then the stuff that you're really looking for is the next element inside of that element there's always some sort of a wrapper element around it so that's pretty much for the words here and so like i guess i was saying here so then we come down here and we finally get down to this point here where we have a headline and it's that grayed out text color again that we had at the top before i started messing with it Okay, so the next thing we look at is images, and there's not much for images on this page. So actually, let's just go back to our start here. It'll reload everything as it does it. And so we got an image here, and for me, there's a lot of different ways you can find images or take them off of pages that you are design hacking. Easiest way for me is to click and drop, and that's it. That's what I do. Now, in this case here, it came out as a webby file, so that's not gonna work. So we're gonna do right click, I have a uh, Chrome extension called Save Images Type, and we're gonna come down, Save Images Type, we're going to save as a PNG, and then it should, let me see here, it's gonna drop, oh, desktop, yeah. All right, we'll save it as a desktop, and now it's over here, and that is our image saved right there, so let's just trash this other one here, move that, and then here is a video, as we come down the page further, again, this is all inside the lesson itself right here. Um, here we just have a text element. We have a section again here, a section with a border around the outside of it. We have a text element with some text inside of it. Here is an image. Here is an image. Anytime you can just grab it and pull it like that, you know that it's an image. And then the rest of the stuff here is buttons. And uh, let me see, we already talked about finding the color on this stuff here. So let me just inspect that again, because colors would be the next, next thing, or paint, I guess is what uh, Catherine calls it. And so here we see the background color of this is this whatever color that is again. And the font color, anytime you just see the word color, that means the font color, and in this case, it is white. And anything else, padding around it, border, radius, four pixels. So that's what we needed to know there. And let me see, is there anything else exciting on here? Not really, um, but let me go to, let's see here. Cause I got to find one of them where there's a challenge in there because what she did there is she has this parallax image. So we're gonna see this here as we scroll up and down, the image stays in place. Now what happens on a parallax image, anytime you do a parallax image, it creates it as a fixed position on the page. So this image is on the entire page. It's just that you can only see the part where the background here is transparent in this section. So let's inspect this and open that up and we got our, yeah, here it is right here. So if you see, I hover over it, you can see that this image over right here, this image is much bigger than what we're seeing on the screen. We're only seeing like really kind of the right half of it here, because I think this actually is a picture. I, where, let me see, position, um, center, is that it? Yeah, if you see here, I think this is Dubai. When, when I see the side of that thing there, I think that's a, that's a building in Dubai. But, um, but as I was showing here, you only see about half of this image. And that's because the other half of it is right here. And so it is fixed on the entire page. So they put it into this particular row 
inside of this lesson, which means you had to do that for every time you did one of these, you had to duplicate that. Whereas what I think you can do is we can set this as the overall background of the entire page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this. I'm going to copy the link address and then I'm going to pull this down. Oops. Don't want to do it on that page. And I'm going to paste this in. And so here's the image and I'm going to right click and we are going to save the image as, and we'll save it to the desktop. Push that, oops, before I push that back up. Reason I'm having to pull this down is because your guys' pictures are in front of it. Uh, let me see here, is there anything else here? Okay, we got buttons, videos. Like I said, we got a video right here. I'll show you how to put that in. And then we got a button right here. Let's inspect that button. And again, let's see here we got, so here's the button inner outer part of it. Here's the button inner part of it. And we have a link here to uh, pay kickstart. So that looks like some sort of an affiliate program. Um, and then inside of it is everything else we need to know. So let's just click on the outer part here. And we're going to see we got our background color of that dark blue color. We got a font size of 14 pixels. Again, same everything. And we got a border radius of 60 pixels. So we know that. So, so again, this is the way I do it. We got some uh, padding on here as well. And the other thing is, let me show you on this, is you saw as I was moving my mouse around the screen, all the different colors and everything flashing all over. That's because it shows us what the padding is, the borders, the margins, all that kind of stuff. So as I bring my mouse down into here and I go over the padding, it's going to show me on the screen right over here, it's going to show me in green where the padding is on this element. If I come down here further, it's just going to show me the element itself. And let's find something. Let's find this element here. It's got a border on it. Is it the row? Yeah. Okay. So here, if I come over here on the margin, you're going to see we got a 15 margin at the top, but we got a negative 15 on the side. So it's not going to show us that, except that if you see here on the corner, see that corner is kind of clipped off. That indicates to you that it's in 15 pixels. And if there were to be this, I don't know what color this is, peach or something, if it were to show that, uh, that color, it would actually be behind this row. So that's why we can't see it. And then we have a border of three pixels. We have padding again in the green of 20 on top, 30 on the bottom, 10 on either side. And then the content inside of it itself is 700 Point six five six pixels by 343.469. So 700 pixels wide by 343 pixels tall. So whenever you're dealing with heights and widths, the first number is always your width. It's always your x-axis. It's always your horizontal, whereas the second number is always your height, your y-axis, or your vertical. So that's how those numbers always are. So always look at just the first one. That's your width. Whenever I set any kind of sizing for images or anything else like that, I always just set the width because if you set both, if you don't have them exactly perfect, you're going to distort the shape of the image. So that was that. And then spacing, of course, we can't do that until we actually build the thing. So here we go. I got a members area open up here. And the first thing you want to do uh, again here, because in Catherine's case, this was a product that she sold and she wants to restrict access to everything in it. So you're going to set up a whole bunch of sections. And um, so we'll just call this section two. I'm just going to make this stuff real fast and we'll just go section three. Obviously you're going to want to call it something uh, more intelligent than that. And that's, that's what we have here. So we got our three sections and then inside of each section, you're going to have a lesson. So I'm going to have to move this out of the way. No, oh, come here. So let's see, we don't need that page open. So right here, that's your section header. So in our case here, our very first lesson would say first section and then S2, S3. That's what's going to populate in this colored 
box here and then the lessons themselves, those names as we type them in will populate down here. So again, I'm just for the sake of brevity, I'm not gonna worry about uh, calling them anything special. So we have those lessons. Now in this case here, let's just, uh, let's just duplicate a couple of lessons. And a lot of times when you do stuff in here, it won't necessarily show up right away where it's supposed to. So you have to reload the page and then it'll put things where, where you want it to go because what we're gonna do now is we're going to edit this lesson and we're going to say, we don't want that in the first section, we want that in S2 and we're gonna name it, instead of first lesson, we're gonna call this second lesson. And of course you can have as many lessons as you want in each one of these sections. Now you see it didn't go where we wanted it to. We'll change that in a minute. We're gonna say on this one here, let's go down to S3 and we're gonna say we want this to be our third lesson and we'll update that lesson. And now let's reload the page and it'll put everything where it's supposed to be. Okay, so now everything's where we want it. Now the next thing you wanna do is you wanna come in, you wanna restrict your content because you can restrict it as per the product that somebody bought or you can restrict it as a tag. So in this case here, we're gonna say we wanna restrict it as a product and you'll come in here and you'll have to scroll through and you'll find the product that you want to restrict it to. So we'll just say we want premium membership. So you're, not, you're gonna know what product you sold, so you just set it as that, or you can come down here and you can set any tag. So let's just say we wanna put in the tag of white. Now you don't have to do both, you can do one or the other. Now maybe you want, um, somebody didn't buy your product, but you wanna give it to them for free. So you can set a tag of free in here, and then you go into their, in, into their record inside the contact database, and you give them the tag of free, and then they can come in here, they never bought the product, but you give them the tag of free, and so they get free access to it as well. And the Wasabi OTO, that's a totally different thing we'll talk about in, well, we're not gonna talk about it at all today, um, but in other lessons for other stuff I have. So the same thing, you come in here, do the exact same thing, you would restrict the content for every single one of these sections. So because it, I'll tell you this, it's really easy to hack into one of these ClickFunnels memberships. And that's part of the reason why I like them and is because what I like to do is to put in free content. So I put in free content. I leave the front end completely open. Again, that's not for today, but basically I put a little code on the access page that says, oh, hey, you don't have a membership? Here, just click here and get yourself a membership. So whether they paid for something or not, I could put them in and I see somebody's trying to come in here. Let me admit that. Okay. Um, so, so they can easily get into the membership area and they're going to see some free content. They're going to look at that free content and then they're going to go down and they're going to go, oh, hey, I want this content too. And they're going to click on it. And at that point, it's going to trigger the Wasabi OTO, which eventually will send them to a sales page where they can buy that stuff. So I always like building my membership sites with free content and then with paid content as well. And then of course, the paid content will be restricted based upon what you, uh, the settings you have for your products or your tags or whatever you would like. So let me see here. So we got that restricted. So now we want to open up this lesson and we're gonna start hacking some of the lessons themselves. Now, as you notice, we haven't even built the page yet, but I want to start off with the lesson. And so let's just take lesson, well, no, let's, let's go to lesson number three. Um, debugging connection was closed. I have no idea what that means. What happened to my page here? Are we all still live? Um, looks like we are. So we'll reload the page. All right, so we're gonna go to challenge number one. And the reason why I wanna do challenge number one is because I want to put in this background color and see if we can do this as a site-wide background instead of having to do it into each one of these lessons. So what we have here at the top, we have this section again, as we already determined that's what it was. So we got a, well, they, like I said, they call it a container here, but we're gonna call it a section inside of, inside of ClickFunnels. And let's take a look here. We got a background color of this color. So let's go to the styles and let's just open that up. 
And let's click there and copy out that color. And now we're gonna come into our lesson. And the first thing I wanna do is just delete out these existing sections. And now we're gonna add a section. And hmm, that's not normally how I add a section. So let me just delete that back out again. Okay, we're gonna add a section. Okay, here we go. So I want that to be full width. Oh, I thought I'd just click on it. Okay, so that's full width. Now let's go into our settings and let's change that background color. Background color. I'm gonna paste that in. Okay, we got that. Now what do we need here? Oops, let's turn that off. That's one of the problems with this is that picker is on all the time. So now here we have two text elements is all this is. So let's inspect this. And we have a headline element and we know it's white. Everything is Gotham. And then we got a font size of 18. And what we're gonna do is we are going to add a new row. It's gonna be one column row. We're gonna make it a sub headline element. And then we're gonna duplicate that because we need two of them. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna pop back out of here for a second because there's something I want to do. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna open it up in the editor. I just did a control, control click there. And we're gonna come up to our settings and we're gonna come down to typography and I wanna set the content to that Gotham. Um, is it on here? Let's see. Well, I'm, maybe that's not in here. Okay, she was using a custom font apparently. Hmm. All right, well, we're just gonna leave this then we're just gonna leave it as open sans and be happy with that then. So we'll leave that there. But as long as I'm in here, let me put in that background image. And didn't we save that to the desktop before? I sure thought we did. Badges, all right, that's probably it. Oops, what am I doing here? Let's open that up. Oh, I see. You saved it as a webby before too. Okay, let's let's come back in here. No, wait. I had that open here. I'll get this figured out. Uh, okay, let me see. Save image as type. Save as a JPEG. Okay, there we go. Okay, we'll add that image. And then we're gonna make it full center fit. Save that. Except it's repeating and I really don't want it to repeat. I guess that won't matter because I'm not gonna see it anyway. It's gonna be off the edge of the screen, but I don't think there's a way to turn that off. No, we're gonna have to, if we want it to be parallax. Okay, so now, next thing we wanna do is, uh, where, where was I? Oh, that's right, I was building this out. We we're gonna change the font, but we don't have the Gotham font, and I don't wanna deal with uh, finding a custom font right now. So let's see here, let's take a look at that lesson. Where were we? So we got challenge number one. And I'm gonna call that bold. We're gonna float that to the left. We're gonna make it white. And 18 it was. And the other one is, let's inspect that. We have 14 white. And it doesn't say, what's the font weight on this? No font weight. V, oops, I guess I gotta copy it first. So 
I think we'll make that bold. And then let's see overall here. Let's see what we got for padding. We'll spec this again. We got padding a 20 on the top, 20 on the bottom of the section itself. So let's, that's not what I wanted to do. So let's take a look at the section. 20, 20. Didn't say anything about that. Okay. Let's go into the row. Okay, so that should be right. And then we had, was it four pixels radius on this? Um, okay, yeah, top border, top left radius, five pixels all the way around. Come into advanced, corner radius, five pixels. And there we have the start of what we got going on. And so I'm just going to save this element just briefly. And we're going to jump back into this page right here because what I want to do now is I want to start building out um, part of this. So let's say we want full width. We want the color on that background to be white. Oh, okay, it's right here in front of me. I was thinking I said border color. So let me see, we got to go in here. We had one section at the top, we had another section here and a third at the bottom total. So let's just duplicate this. So now we have our three sections. In the top section here, we needed, I'm gonna do a single column row and a three column row. The middle section, we need a two column row. And this bottom section, I'm not even gonna build this out. So let's just give this a bunch of top and bottom padding and just leave it B. Okay. And then let's go back in here. So the next thing we need, we needed this text element right here. Wait, that's not what I wanted to do. Let me see. What I wanted to do is I just wanted to put this part in. So let's do that. So in our content section here, we're going to put in our nav menu on the left. And then we're going to put in <clears throat> our content menu or content on the right. And we're going to pull this over. So what we want, it was four and eight. So here we got one, two, three, four right there. That's what we want. And I guess it would line up with this one above it like that. Okay. So now we got our four and our eight and now let's save this. And now we're going to preview it. So there we have the very germ of a start of what we're looking at here is because we got our first section, our first lesson, and here's that very first lesson that we just started to build out. That's why I wanted to come in here and drop this in. Um, okay, so let me see here. So that's what I just wanted to show here is that we're just now just starting to build out this lesson. So now we're gonna come back into our lesson, we're gonna open that up, and what's the next thing we need is we need to find the right page. Let me kill that image. And so now we just had some more text and then a gray bar and then a video image. So let's just inspect this. And we have here. Okay, so we have a row and that's got a little bit of padding on the side. So it's got 10 padding on the sides of the row. And then we come into the column it's got another 15 padding in there. So we, need a, so we need a section, a row, and a column. And we're gonna come in here, we're gonna add another section. We're gonna make that full width. Now let's try that again. Okay, you gotta make sure the drop shows up before you drop it. And we got that, and then we're gonna make, let me see here, it wanted, 
left and right was 10 on this one. And then we're going to put in a row. One column row. And there we wanted 15 on either side. Now, of course, you could do just 25 on one of them and not nothing on the other. So however you want to do that is fine. And then we just had a little bit of text. So let's inspect that text. Let's go to our styles here. We got that. Come on. Got that same color as before. So we'll just copy that out of there. Got a font weight of 700. So it's bold and a font size of 30 pixels. Okay, so we're gonna make this all one element, of course. Come in here, we're gonna drop in a subheadline element, paste it in. This part here, we're gonna make bold. Want the bold color to be, is that the same color? Oops. That must be the same color, so we'll leave that alone. And so we got that, and now we're gonna float this to the left. And what size did I say that was in pixels? 30 pixels. Make it 30. And I lost my bold color. Okay, now hers looks different. So what did she do here? Let's inspect this here because this appears to be bold and this is bold and this is all bold. So how did she do that? Okay, we got element design hacker. Now I guess it's not bold. So you see here, you got the B tag on either side of challenge number one. And then after that, you don't have any more B tags. So might have a function of being that Gotham font. It might be what is causing that. So I'm going to leave it alone for now. Obviously, you can change it on yours if you would like. And I pulled this in all as upper uppercase. But in her case there, they had this set as all caps. So we're going to come in here and you would just do with this text transform, make it uppercase. And then that would make it all uppercase if you had typed it in, in lowercase. And um, design hacker contract, I guess I need the word contract at the end here. So I just typed it all in in lowercase and it made it uppercase. And now if you really wanted to get crazy on this, what I've done this before is when I didn't have a font that was bold enough, what I would do is I would just highlight this part of the font. I'm not gonna show you how to do this now, but you can highlight this part of the font and you can give it just a little bit of a uh, font uh, text border or text, text shadow around it. So you just do a text shadow of one pixel and it'll just draw one pixel around it and it'll make the text look like it's bold, whereas it's not. So that's a workaround if you can't figure out any other way to do that. So then we got another section here, I would guess. So let's click on this and inspect. And of course, I'm not gonna build all this. I'm just gonna build the unique items on here real quickly. And let's see here. Actually, this is just a headline element, it appears to me. Yes, it is. So we got white. Let's copy this. So copy. And then we, that's going to be white. And we got pixel size of 18. So let's come back into our page. Where is that? Oops, right there. And so we're going to stay inside of this same row. And we're just going to add in another text element. B, we're going to float that. 18, and was this font? Where's the font? No font weight, so it'll be normal font weight. And then what we need to do is find out this background color. Background color is right here. Again, we're just going to grab that out. Going to come back into our text element, which I just closed. 
And we're gonna come down here to background color for the text element. We're gonna paste that in. And then we're gonna come back over here again. And we're gonna see what is the padding. We got 25 padding all the way around it. So we'll come into advanced. And we're gonna to go to padding of 25 right there. And is that looking right? Except for the fact, now that clearly is bold and it's also the wrong color. So we're gonna bold this and then we're gonna make it white. And there we go. So that should be relatively close to what we have here. Now you can see the column widths are different because I'm working in the editor. Um, it should look better in a minute. So now let's go in here. Well, in fact, let's, before we forget, let's save so we don't lose our work. And we will reload this page. And so we're gaining on it a little bit. We may need to change the width on that. But I'm not, I'm not going for perfection here, just kind of showing you all how to work inside of the editor for the membership sites. And then, let's go back here. So then we just have a video element. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna drop in a video element next, and I'm just gonna stay right in this section. We're gonna drop in that video element. But actually, maybe I shouldn't do that, because Nope, it is the same width. Okay, so it is the same width there. So we're gonna drop in a video element and let me do this. Let me open up, grab a YouTube URL. Okay, so I'm gonna open up one of these here. This is one I, I shot for Catherine. Let's open this up. Because I wanna show you the proper one to use, the proper address to use here. Uh, because if you use the wrong one, it doesn't work. So whenever you're working with a YouTube video inside of ClickFunnels, you do not want to come down here and click on share and use this, this address down here. You do not want to use this one. You do not want to use the one that says youtube.be. You don't want to use that one. You want to use the one directly here out of the address line. So we're going to copy that out. We're gonna come over, we're gonna open this back up. We're gonna change this to YouTube and we're gonna put in that URL. And generally speaking, pretty much just leave this stuff alone unless you know what you're doing on it. But in this case here, basically somebody's gonna come in, they're gonna click on it, they're gonna play their video. So 99% of the time inside a membership area, you're just gonna drop that in and you're gonna be done with it. So now let's just see spacing here. I would guess we probably got our spacing okay, and we're good to go there. So now, um, next thing to do is we're gonna make this gray box. Now you're gonna see here, it's gray box after gray box after gray box, all with the yellow and a few other things on the inside. So we basically have, <coughs> excuse me, we basically have two more sections to build, and then we're gonna be done uh, with this part at least. Okay, so we're gonna come down and this is gonna be a full width section with a border around it. So we'll come down here to the, huh, okay, that's saying it's just a row. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna build it as a section because that's what I think it should be. And we got three pixels and we have the border border color right there, which you can't pick it from there. You have to come over here to do it. And border with border style. Border radius, why am I not seeing border color? Oh, it's right here. So we're gonna copy out that border color and we are going to add a new full width section. Advanced. Full border color, three pixels, or solid three pixels, and 
there we go. And we want to square corners on that. So we got the border put around it and now probably don't need any padding there. Nope, we're gonna be okay there. So now all we need here is this here should be just a text element again. Yep, it's just text element with number one there. And then we have an image. So let's pull that image off. Let's see if it comes in as a webby or not. It did, so let's do this again. And we're gonna save as a type of, we want this to be a PNG because I'm pretty sure it has a transparent background. And then we'll grab the click funnels as well. That's not what I wanted. Save images type, save as PNG, save that as well. So we got those two. And so now we're gonna come in, we're going to drop in, well, we need a row first. We just need a single column row. We're going to drop in a subheadline element. Just number one, float it to the left. We're gonna set the background color. And we need to set that font color to white. Text color white. And then we needed font size of 18. Okay. And was there any kind of padding around this? We got 10 padding there, 10 margin at the top. So we need padding of 10 all the way around. Okay, so there we are so far. That white is not standing out very much because I need to bolden that. Much better. And I wish I could scroll down further on the page here. Why is it not letting me do that? So I'm gonna save it, which I haven't done for a while. Let's reload this page. Okay, so we're gonna need two image elements. And we're gonna open that up. Okay, I'm gonna grab both of these images. I'm gonna drop those in. And so the first one, we're gonna add that image. And then the second one, Okay, now let's take a look here. Let's uh, take a look here. We're gonna inspect this. And we see here that it has a width of five pixels on the yellow one. And this one has a width of 75 pixels. So let's come in here. We're gonna set that width of five pixels. And then we are going to advance. We're gonna float that to the left. And then we got this one here, 75 pixels. And advanced and float that to the left. And then in between there, we have another text element. We'll make that bold, and then what color was this? It wasn't black, I don't think that's black. What does this say here? It's whatever color this is, that's what it is. Bold color, paste that in, and then we need to figure out what the size is. So we got font weight of 718 pixels. And then what kind of padding do we have around this thing? Okay, the margin. All right, so we got no padding or nothing, but we got margin of 10 at the top.
Okay, there's that a little closer. Well, that's about probably 10 there, 10 there. Now, and of course, I'm like I said, I'm not doing this exactly like Catherine would. She would just plunk everything in and then do this the do the spacing at the end, but I just I just can't do that. It's just just wrong for me. I just kind of build as I go. All right, so I think that's looking pretty good there. And so we got one, I'm gonna just skip this text element here. We've seen enough text elements. So the last one we're gonna do is we're gonna build out this, this button. So let's inspect that. And so we got the button. So it says sign up for ClickFunnels again, which is what we just had on the last one. And so we got 15 margin at the top. Now, whenever you're doing a button, again, like I said, there's usually an element and then there's an element inside of an element. So in the case of a button here, you got your outer button element and then the inner button element, it still has a class of L button, L button size, everything right down here. <coughs> but inside of there, it has a, an A tag, which is, stands for anchor text. So that means that there's gonna be some text here and when somebody clicks on it, then it's going to do what it's supposed to do. So basically, whether it's a button or a link or whatever, they, they pretty much have the exact same effect. <coughs> Excuse me, obviously I'm starting to lose my voice already. So what we had here is we got border radius of 60. We got this blue background color, so let's grab a hold of that. And white and otherwise, we're just gonna leave this open on the computed. So let's go in here. We're going to grab out a button element. Where is the button element? And so we're gonna float this to the left. Should be right down here at the bottom. And then we wanted not border corners, 60 pixels. And we wanted the text to be the same as the last one we had, which was not that. Um, it is this. And we wanted text color of white. Font size of, font size of 14. And then, oops, we didn't change the background color. Background color, which I know I lost because, let's go back to style. And then we needed to put an icon in there as well. So let's open that element back up. And we're gonna to go to advanced and we're gonna to go to the icon picker before, and we're just gonna type in the word arrow and there's a double arrow to the right, I do believe. Yes, it is. And that should be it. Now, besides a little bit of spacing, let me see here, is that What does she have for spacing around here? So 20 and then 10 and a border of three. So let's go back into our right here, 20, 20, 10. All right, so that should be pretty much a duplicate of what Catherine has here. And then all she does is just go in and just duplicate, 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 change out a little bit of text and away you go. So the last one we need to do is this one here, the outside, the structure, everything is a duplicate. The only difference is gonna be that background. And of course you're gonna have to pull in different images and whatnot. So just let's take a quick look at how we can duplicate this and change it because we're gonna duplicate this, we're gonna clone it. And we're gonna need a little padding in between. Let's just throw in like 20. And now as I'm starting to think about this, I don't think my plan is gonna to work to, to um, 
use that image the way I thought we could use it because we can come in here and we can make this transparent. So background on the column is transparent, but the background on this page, I don't think there's a way to change that. Let's see, let's go over here and let's see what we come up with. Because the section here, we'd have to make the entire section here transparent in order for this to also be transparent. So they do have to put that in for each individual one of these. So let's do that then. We will come in and we're going to have to give it a background of that image. Okay, so that's in there and we wanna make this full center parallax. Now that's not gonna work either. Hmm. Well, let's save it and see what we got here. Because it may, once it gets to this page here, show it as full center parallax. No, that's not gonna work. All right, let's go back in here and see how, see how they had this. I thought they had that for that row. Okay, so they have it for the row itself. Not, well, they, they had a row here instead of a section. That shouldn't make any difference. And um, so the image attachment is fixed, no repeat, center. That should be what we told it to be. So let's go into our version of it. Let's inspect this. Okay, so here's our container. And we got attachment fixed, center, the whole thing. Hmm. See, this is why it's not that much fun to watch people write code or anything like that because when you get stuck like this, then you just kind of have to scratch your head and come back an hour later and go, okay, what am I missing here? Because I'm clearly missing something. So if anybody's got any ideas, I'm, I'm open to listen to anybody here who's got an idea on this because I'll have to think about that one a little bit and maybe shoot a little uh, extra video at the end here to show how I fix that because I'm not gonna sit here and, and uh, waste all of our time for too long on that. I actually had this set up right. What I did since uh, getting off the live call, I cleaned this up so it looks a lot more like Catherine's does. I grabbed her images. I put them in there. I made that black, uh, black background here for this text element. And so I cleaned everything up. And then when you look at this then live, this is what it looks like. So you don't see the entire image like you see here where you got these towers sticking up in the air. You only see the part of the image that we wanted to see, which is exactly the same as what Catherine had. So I did have a setup right all along as far as putting this in, putting that image in as a background for the section. Again, it's not going to work right as the background for the entire page because there's no way to be able to show that through the white background all around here. So you do have to put it in as a background of this section, or in Catherine's case, she did it as a row, but I prefer to do it as a section. But that was right, you just put it in there, you set it to parallax, and then it's going to look just fine. And as we scroll up and down on the screen, it looks exactly like Catherine's does. So that's what we got right now so far. So now what we got to do is we're gonna have to come in here and we're gonna have to build out a couple other things to match up for Catherine here. So she had the different rows up here at the top. So let's uh, grab this text out of here. And we're gonna go into, not into there. Actually, let me save this and close this. We're gonna put in again a subheadline element. We're gonna put that in. We're going to inspect it again. And in this case here, we got 14 and 
that color and all uppercase. Okay, text color, that's that, and I'm gonna make it bold. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we have our row settings right here. So we're gonna go into our row, and we know that each of these columns is a third of the width. So this is two thirds of the width right here, or 67%. So let's just pull this down to 65%. And we're gonna float this to the right. And then what we're gonna do is, okay, center it. So, so now this is gonna be centered over these two buttons right here, which is the way I would prefer to have this. Then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in an image element right here. And so we're gonna scroll down and find an image. Pull this out of the way, open that up. Okay, so we have the image, now we're gonna come over, we're gonna inspect it and find out how big that image is. Again, just looking at what is the width, we got 90 pixels wide, and so we're gonna make this 90. And now I know from inspecting the other page already earlier that it has negative top margin of 30. And then we're gonna come into this row here, and we're going to take out that top padding and that's gonna push those up closer. And now what we have to do is put in a button right here. So we'll scroll down and we'll find the button and we'll grab that, I didn't wanna do that. All right, let me inspect it. It's not gonna play nice with me. We'll come over here and we'll grab the text from here. Copy that out, come in here. Background color should be that color there. We already know that we had 60 on our corners and we had a, an icon. Can't, I can't actually see, I'm guessing which one it is. There we go. And then that font size is clearly too big. So again, we'll inspect this element. We will find that font size. And it is 14 pixels. And now what we're gonna do is we're just going to duplicate this, drag it over. And there we have it, pretty close. Hers seemed to be a little bit wider. I guess maybe I could put a little padding in there. And like I said, mine are gonna be, mine are both gonna be centered. Or wait, does she have, oh, hers are uppercase, that's it. So let's go in here. We're gonna change that text to all uppercase. And custom style. Okay, text transform, uppercase, there it is. There we go, it gives us the size we're looking for. Okay, and now both of these should be centered in their columns and this should be centered above it, but it doesn't appear to be quite right up top here. So let's do this. We're gonna not, wait a second here. I'm gonna open up the row on that. And instead of 65, I'm gonna go 70. Let's go where it should be, 67. Actually make it 68. Oops, not 78. 
we want 68. And there you go. So that would be perfectly centered right over this because, again, these two columns here combined total should be 67.7%. So 68 is close enough. And then otherwise, height and everything wise, okay, this should be up a little, little bit higher. Uh, but, you know, that's when we start getting a little fussy about things. And uh, let's just make it 35. And we don't need perfection at this point. You get the idea of how this works. And then the only other thing we haven't looked at is we because we got our content column here so actually let me save this and then we will preview the page again okay so we got everything here we got our video and we got our two boxes and like i said i'll shoot some video once i figure out how to make that work out right and so the only thing we got to look at is this here so let's come in and we're just going to click on this element here it's our navigation element we're going to open that up and we're going to want, let's see here, we got a text color of white. Start with that, oops, where am I here? So text color of white, the background is gonna be that whatever-ish color right there. And you know something, that may be it. Because I think she's using everything else standard here as far as the hovers and everything else. What I'm going to do is duplicate this a couple of times. So let me just save this element. Reload the page. Yeah, I think what she's using is just the standard stuff in here. At least if not, it's really close to it. So that is it. I mean, we tighten up the spacing here. Her spacing is down a little bit here, whether you like that or not, you can, you can put that down a hair uh, for all of those columns. And how you do that is you just come in here and you just go, oh, okay, give me, let's just say five top margin, just move it down a smidge. And then here, that didn't look like that was tight enough. So let's pull that back up some. And again, we could inspect this and find out exactly what they had on theirs if we wanted it exactly the same, but we're not gonna worry about that today. So let's do this, save that. Let it load up. So I uh, say so that needs to come down another five pixels. And you can even tighten up these columns here a little bit here. If there's a uh, padding along the sides, you can pull that out and uh, things like that. Um, you can, like I said, you can drive yourself pretty much batty getting down to the nitty gritty of things. So on this column here, we come into our columns and let's find that one. So it'd be the second column right here. And so it's got, does it have any left and right? Uh, if it did, I'm not sure, but let's go back into the first column. Okay, I don't think it had anything there. It might have, so let's save it again. But that's it. If anybody's got any question, I see there's still a couple people on here. I haven't bored everybody completely to death at this point. So if anybody's got any questions, open up your mic, ask your questions. Otherwise, I am done. My voice is shot and I need a nap. So uh, I'll give you all a couple minutes if you got any questions or comments or anything. If I had a clue how to find the chat again, seeing it disappeared on me. Here we go, chat. Uh, sweet dreams, Dan. <laughs> what did you, go, did you go to bed? No, I see you're still on the screen here from Ordelphi. <laughs> Hi, Dan. It's Hope. Um, my only, I guess, real question I have, other than going and trying to, you know, after I've seen this and then doing it myself, I'll probably have questions then, but um, is how long, like, uh, I don't know that I'll put everything that Catherine has in her site, but, you know, building like the whole thing, what, what kind of time do you think? I know it took you, what, a, about, what, an hour and a half or so to do what you've done so far, but you yeah. think it's a um, partly, partly though, what took so long was, um, finding out how she did it just to be able to get the spacing right and the, this right and the, that right. When you're building yourself, you're not going to do that stuff. You're going to basically, you're going to start building. Now, 
if you want to learn how to do this, if you want to, you know, just come in here and design hackers just to get uh, familiar with it, that's great. But when you start building it yourself, you're not going to go, oh, well, this person over here had 10 pixels and, and I only have five pixels. No, you're going to, you're going to make it look good. Whatever looks good to you visually, you're not going to spend all the time inspecting somebody else's site. Right. Okay. So just to build out the basics here, you could do all this in half an hour because you essentially need to come in here to this, this page here. So this is your, let me get rid of that zoom thing in the middle. Um, this here is your basic, this is the membership area. So if you're on this page here, you just click here, open an editor and that opens up this page here. And all you need is a two column row. You don't even need a two column row because this navigation element can be anywhere you want on the page. It doesn't have to be in the left hand side column, left side column here. And this content doesn't have to be in the right. You could do one on top of each other. You could do it the other way around, put the content on the left, this on the right. I have a bunch of them I've built where you don't even see this navigation at all. It's hidden on the page. And I use other ways to do the navigating around, but that's again, that's probably way, way beyond where you are, of course, at this point. But Interesting. Okay. the, Thank the you. point is, well, if you ever want to, if you ever want to see one, go to, go to quickstartblueprint.com. First off is a lot of great training on how to get started with click funnels, but you're also going to see in there, that's a, that's a click funnels membership site, but you would never know it uh, by, by, by looking at it. In fact, let me, I'll just pull it up here real quick as long as we mentioned it. If I can, well, I can see how, why people have trouble with those, uh, with the, the images of us, because you can't hardly move them. Let me see here. You said it was quickstartblueprint.com? Yep. And this is where I was saying earlier how I make the front ends open for everybody. So I put this down here, already a member. Well, they put in already a member login here. I put this in here, not a member, sign up here. Okay, now this is going to probably take a little bit to load because we're recording and Zooming and, and everything. Uh, but down here at the bottom, this is mostly just advertising. I got people here for free. I'm giving them free content. It'd be nice if somebody once in a while would click on this stuff down here. But eventually when the page loads up, We'll give it a little more time here. So this is a ClickFunnels membership site. The exact same thing you just saw me building, except I use these icons right here for navigation. So each one of these icons represents a different lesson. And then inside of where we build out the lessons, I built out this content. Interesting. Yeah, yeah I, like, I like it. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, so you asked, do you have to learn a whole bunch of CSS and JavaScript and all that kind of stuff? To do something like this, yes. To build a okay. basic ClickFunnels membership site, no. Okay. So as, as I get down the road, I can add more bells and whistles. <laughs> uh, there's like an infinite number of bells and whistles you can, you can build into this. I'm working with Andrea right now. I think she's still on here. Maybe she went to bed and left her, mic or left her camera on. But... Um, I'm building one with her right now that uh, it's one, one of the things I did and I just finished it up last night. I haven't even told Andrea yet is when somebody, we have a quiz inside of this membership area. There she is. We have a quiz inside of this membership area. And when somebody fills out the quiz, when they get a perfect score on the quiz, what it does is it automatically adds a tag to that person's ClickFunnels account. And I figured out how to do it in 10 simple steps last night, Andrea. 10, 10 steps it takes to get there. Love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, Catra's Madon outfit. Yes. Yeah. I mean, here's, here's my list of steps right there. That's what you got to do in order to get it done because you have to take, you have to, first off, you got to build the, you got to build the quiz and then you got to connect it to the, uh, to the Google sheet. And then once it gets to the Google sheet, the formatting is wrong. And so you have to build a macro in order to correct the formatting. And then you have to trigger that macro to run every single minute. 
And then from there, it'll finally get into the second sheet where it says that these people actually passed the test and should be tagged, which will then trigger Zapier to add the tag to the contact database. I love it. Yeah. Can't yeah. wait. Yeah, it took me a few, few hours on Sunday to figure that one out. Mad genius you are, Dan. Mad genius. So, well, and here's the thing is, it would not have been so difficult had there not been a glitch in, it's a known glitch, but it's a glitch where mm -hmm. anything that goes from a Google, from a Google quiz into a Google sheet, it, it ignores your formatting. So if you build a Google sheet and you say, okay, this column has to have this formatting, it ignores the formatting and uses whatever it wants. And so you have to fix the formatting by running the macro. And it's, so it took me a little bit to figure that one out. I hadn't built a macro in 10 years. But any other questions from anybody? Um, well, you don't have to go over this now. Maybe there's probably already a video out there. Um, but so like if you, I'm still, like I said, I'm still so new to it. So if you have a website, like an actual domain name, and how do you get, is, is there a video that you already have in the group about pointing your domain name to the click funnel and, and setting that all up? Or does, or does Catherine have one that I haven't gotten um, to? I no would one. strongly suggest you come here to Quick Start Blueprint. Okay. Now, Catherine may have one. I don't know. Um, I would come here to custom domains, come down here and watch this right here, five minute okay. domain setup. And okay. because that's going to be your best video to do this. And we run everything through uh, a service known as Cloudflare. Okay. And Cloudflare is 100% free. So you don't have to worry about paying for that. Okay. But it's, it's the best way to really secure the site and ensure that it doesn't get hacked. And it just, it just makes it easier. And who's your, who's your domain provider? Um, well, I, it was a GoDaddy. GoDaddy is where I got the name, but I don't have that. The one I'm, the website I'm thinking about using, I don't have it hosted yet. No, you don't need hosting at all. Okay. ClickFunnels, ClickFunnels is your host. All you need to do is buy the domain okay. somewhere. So if you're using GoDaddy, I use GoDaddy for all my domains. Um, so just buy it at GoDaddy and the instructions right down here in this video show you exactly how to do it using GoDaddy. Okay. Perfect. And, and seriously, if it takes you more than five minutes to do this, you did something wrong, start over again. <laughs> okay. Because, I mean, th to this day, there are people who are like, well, you know, it could take 72 hours full. If it takes seven and a half minutes, you screwed something up, start all over again. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So don't, don't buy into that. It's going to take you three weeks to get it set up. Okay. Thank okay. you. Anyone else? Any other takers? Dan? Can you yes. hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. It's Nicole. How are you? How's, how's Good are you? You're, you're down in South Africa, right? Yeah, it's almost midnight. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's way past your bedtime. Yeah. I just had a question. The client I'm wanting to build the membership site for, he currently has one. Um, and he's having some complaints about the navigation that's not user friendly. Um, is there a way that you can uh, set the navigation bar for the lessons that's quite lower down? Um, so, for instance, if you go to Catherine's site, um, challenge number 10 would be scrolled down quite far past where the video would be. And then if you click on it, it doesn't jump to the top to see the video again. Oh, okay. So let's it, say you had a whole bunch of stuff open here. Yeah, because he's you, got like 12 modules with maybe 8 to 10 videos in each module. So yeah. it goes quite far down. So this is built on ClickFunnels? Yes. Okay. So let's say, let's say so I got all the stuff open here. And so now we come down to the bottom and we decide we want to go to challenge number. Well, let's go to this one here. We're going to click on this one here. It leaves you sitting down here at the bottom, just like this. Exactly. Okay. So you want it to click and then scroll to the top. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me make myself a note here and I will send you the code for that. Cause it's, it's, it's very simple code. It's just basically all it says okay. is on the click of any lesson, scroll back to the top. Okay, cool. Okay, Thanks. So. Scroll to top for Nicole. Oops. And that's Coons, right? Okay. All right. Anything else? 
Nobody, nobody, nobody. Okay, we are done then. Thank you all for being here today. And again, as always, got any questions, just let me know.